In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the Random Walk Metropolis algorithm. So the Random Walk Metropolis algorithm is a way of doing dependent sampling. So we use it in Bayesian statistics because it allows us, using only the numerator of Bayes' rule, to generate samples from the posterior distribution. And so the Random Walk Metropolis algorithm is perhaps the simplest and the best known version of Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithms. It's called a Markov chain. In, in fact, Random Walk Metropolis is what's known as a first order Markov chain because of the fact that the decision as to where to step next in parameter space only depends on your current position. It doesn't depend on the history of all the positions that you've visited. And it's known as a type of Monte Carlo algorithm because it uses pseudo-random numbers. And so the idea here was that the analogy is imagining throwing a dice in a casino in Monte Carlo. Before you actually throw the dice, you don't know which number is going to turn up. So in a sense, the throw of the dice is a random number generator. It's a type of dependent sampling algorithm because of the fact that where we step next depends on where we currently are. So where we're going to sample next from in posterior space depends on where we are currently positioned. So now I'm going to define how this algorithm actually works. So the first step in this algorithm is that you sample a value of theta using some arbitrary proposal distribution. And I'm, I'm just going to call that here pi of theta. So this pi of theta can be kind of whatever you want. Ideally, you would like something that was quite close to the posterior distribution. But in practice, we don't really know what that is the majority of the time. And hence, we use some sort of arbitrary way of starting off our Markov chains. Then what we do is for each iteration, we first of all propose a new place to step, which I'm going to call here theta t primed. And I'm saying for each iteration here, I should really be saying iteration t. So theta t primed is being drawn from some symmetric distribution which is centered on our current location. So that's typically a normal distribution which is centered on our previous value that we sampled. And that normal distribution has some standard deviation, which we're required to set manually. It doesn't have to be a normal distribution here, but in the random walk metropolis algorithm, we must have a certain property for this proposal distribution, it's sometimes called also a jumping distribution. And the property that this jumping distribution must satisfy is that the probability density of jumping from theta a to theta b has got to be the same as the probability density associated with going in the other direction, from theta b to theta a. And the normal distribution centered on our current location actually satisfies this condition. So it's the common choice in random walk metropolis. Then what we do is we calculate a ratio r. And that ratio is given by the value of the unnormalized posterior at theta t primed. So that's the likelihood p of x given theta t primed times the prior density at theta t primed divided through by the same, the unnormalized posterior, but for where we were previously positioned. So that's at theta t minus 1. Then what we do is we use this ratio r to determine whether or not we move to our new location that we've proposed, or in fact we sample again from our current location. So the idea is that this ratio r dictates the probability that we move to a new location. And to ensure that that's the case, we compare our value of r with a random sample from a uniform distribution on 0 and 1. And if it's greater, then, in that case, we actually move to the new location. So our new location, theta t, is equal to theta t primed. Else, our new location, theta t, is just what our old location was. So we sample twice from our old location, essentially. Now, I want to illustrate, using an animation that I've created in Mathematica, how this algorithm works in practice. So imagine that we have some unnormalized entity which has this kind of shape which I've shown here. So the 
y-axis here, the vertical axis, is just the likelihood times the prior, and the bottom axis here is theta. So the idea with random walk metropolis is that we first of all start off by choosing some random starting location using some proposal distribution. So we might start off somewhere like this. So our current position of theta is just where we sort of intersect on the horizontal axis here. Then what we do is we use a proposal distribution centered on our current location. So here I've just used the normal to propose a new location in theta space. Then what we do is we calculate the ratio r of the height of our current location with that of the proposed location. So here we can see that we're going from a height of around 1.2 to something like 0.7, which if you take the ratio of the unnormalized posterior at our new location or a proposed new location and compare that with our current location, then you get a value of r of about 0.58. Then what we do is we compare that value of r with a uniformly distributed random number between zero and one. And here we get, so we just so happen to have sampled a value of 0 0.82. And hence, because R is less than that value, we actually reject that location. And we start again, essentially we sample twice from our current location. Then what we do in the next iteration of the algorithm, we propose a new location. And we see that for our new location, the height is greater than our current location and hence r is greater than 1 and hence r is always going to be greater than a uniformly distributed random number between 0 and 1 and hence we will always move to that new location. So we accept this proposal and we move to this new location and so we sample a value of theta which is given by the sort of intersection between where our figure is located and the horizontal axis. Then what we do is we propose a new location using our jumping distribution. We then calculate the value of R for that new proposal, comparing it with our current height. And then we compare that value of R with a uniformly distributed random number between zero and one. And now because we just so happened to have obtained a value of U, which is less than R, we will accept that proposal and we'll move to that new location. Then we can imagine repeating this process many, many times and hence we get out a kind of series of accepted locations in parameter space. And just to be clear here, the samples that we obtain are the sort of x values for each of these figures here. And for some of these figures, we've seen that actually we might have two samples from one location. We get two samples from one location if we reject the proposal. Now I want to illustrate how we can use the random walk metropolis algorithm to sample from some particular density. And the density I want to sample from is shown here on the left-hand side. Essentially, we've got two dimensions now. We've got what I call east and another one north. And we've got a kind of mountain range here where the vertical axis here corresponds to the probability density. Another way of showing this density is via a contour plot, which I've shown over here on the right. So you can see here that this sort of contour that we've got over here in the top left corresponds to this peak here. And the idea with a contour plot is that each of the lines corresponds to a line of constant probability density. Now I want to illustrate how the random walk metropolis algorithm would work in this particular example. So what I've got here is my random walk metropolis algorithm stepping around parameter space. And each time we propose a location which is rejected, I'm showing that in orange. And every time we accept a proposal, we, I'm going to illustrate that here in green. And you could see then when we accept a proposal, we then move to that new location. And so you can see after running the algorithm for only about 100 steps here, we are starting to trace out a path which is quite indicative of the location of the modes in this parameter space. So just watching it again, you can see that we are proposing quite a lot of values and we're accepting a reasonable proportion of them but it's still relatively inefficient because we're actually rejecting a lot of the proposals. So we're actually staying where we were for more than one iteration. Now I want to show how the random walk metropolis algorithm can lead to a sampling distribution, which eventually looks quite a lot like our target density. So on the left here, I've got a reconstructed density via samples from the metropolis algorithm. And on the right here, I've got the actual density that we're trying to sample from. 
And we can see that as I run my Metropolis sampler, and in each case I try and reconstruct the density with all the samples that I've taken, we can see that after I've taken a reasonable number of samples from the random walk Metropolis algorithm, that the estimated density, the, the sampling distribution, starts to look quite a lot like the actual density. And we can see that after we've sort of run somewhere around 15,000, 20,000 iterations for this case, that we get a reasonable convergence of our algorithm to the target density. And if I was to run it even longer, it would get closer and closer to the actual density. And indeed, under quite general conditions, the random walk metropolis algorithm is guaranteed to asymptotically converge on the target distribution. So asymptotically here just means that you have an infinite sample size. In a finite sample, the performance of the algorithm is influenced by many things, the most important of which is the shape of the posterior itself. However, the chosen step size sigma of your jumping kernel also affects the finite sample performance of the random walk metropolis algorithm. So in summary, the random walk metropolis algorithm is a way of doing dependent sampling from our posterior. It's perhaps the simplest form of Markov chain Monte Carlo. And it's Simplicity is actually its key. You can apply random walk metropolis to virtually any circumstance that you come across. It may not be very efficient, but you can pretty much always use it.